It's called match lock, and this is the reason. That you had to load it down the barrel, the way you would load any kind of a percussion gun with powder and a ball. But then, in this place right here, you would put a, a candle wick that is lit. And you would put some powder in this pan right here and close it down. When you're ready to fire it, you open up the pan and squeeze the trigger. When you squeeze the trigger, the candle uh, wick would bring the flame down to the pan like that. And if it wasn't windy, if it wasn't raining, if you had a steady hand, it might fire. I have the model 1871 Colt single action and the model 1873 Colt single action. And this is the evolution. The evolution is Colt started with a percussion gun here. And after that, Colt went to these kind of guns, which were conversions. And then Colt went to this kind of a gun, which was a single action, not a conversion, but not the ultimately chosen style. And then finally to the Colt Single Action Army, which is the one that's endured ever since. This is a Colt 1860 Army Civil War gun, very much like this one, which is the actual 1860 Army. And you can see they don't look exactly alike. The difference in the rarity is this one has a fluted cylinder. You see the difference? Colt made several hundred thousand 1860 armies, but they only made 4,000 with fluted cylinders. You can see that the loading lever, which would normally be right here, is gone. And you can also see that the length of the barrel has been shortened. So this gun has been deliberately altered to make it more sleek. And um, there's every reason to believe that this alteration was done contemporaneous with the manufacturer of the gun. Not at the Colt factory, but by the, the first or second owner early in the 1860s. So Colt was frequently looking for angles to increase their, uh, uh, their appeal. And this was one of the more unique ways that they did it. This is called the Colt House Pistol, H-O-U-S-E Pistol. And what's unique about it is it has, what you can see is a cylinder that they call the clover leaf, And it's a four leaf clover. This is the Colt Lightning Carbine. And if you look at this gun, and you look at it next to this gun, this is the Winchester Model 1873 Carbine. These are both 4440 in caliber. That's the most desirable caliber. But what happened was Colt put out this pump action carbine in order to compete against Winchester. But they're essentially the same, right? The, the, uh, the Winchester and the Colt are sort of the same gun. Eventually, Winchester said to Colt, Okay, you think you're going to make rifles? Then we think we're going to make pistols. And Colt ultimately acquiesced and said, Oh, wait a minute, uh, maybe that's not such a good idea. The first one of interest is the most unusual, and this is the Spencer. Now, this Spencer is a Spencer Navy rifle with the bayonet. And Spencer was the first and most important repeating rifle in the world and the repeating rifle of the Civil War. And it is the gun that Confederate prisoners said was the gun that most terrified them because you could load it on Sunday and shoot it all day. Remember that everybody else was shooting with a single shot gun that looked like this, where you had to load powder down the cylinder, push a ball in, put on a percussion cap. So anybody who could shoot seven shots, and the way this worked was this way. In the back butt plate of this gun is a tube, and you load the shots into the tube, push them back in, and close it. 
And when you would cock this gun down, the next shell would advance up into there. So the first order was for Navy guns, and this is one of those. So this is the very beginning of the war. So this is the principal weapon of the, of the Civil War. Um, and what's unique about this particular gun, other than its condition, is they manufactured so many guns for the Civil War that it's almost impossible to tell where any of them actually served, except for ones like this. Because this one was made by a company in Massachusetts for the Massachusetts militia, so it's one of the rare identifiable uh, uh, percussion muskets of the Civil War. Expensive, but a real rarity. This is called the Plymouth Rifle, and this is called the Dahlgren Bayonet. And this is the only military bayonet of the Civil War. You can see it's a true, I'm sorry, only military Bowie knife of the Civil War. It's called the Dahlgren Bayonet. If you look at it, you can see it is indeed a Bowie knife. And um, when people collect Civil War Bowie knives, it's only a good guess whether or not they're actually from the Civil War. They look like the Civil War, but they weren't issued to the forces. They were just made by blacksmiths and carried by people, except for the Dahlgren bayonet. And the Dahlgren bayonet only fits on this rifle. It won't fit on any other rifle. And this rifle is called the Plymouth, even though the name on it is Whitneyville, which was the manufacturer. But in the 1850s, Admiral Dahlgren was charged with the responsibility of developing a naval rifle for the, for the, the um, American Armed Forces. And he developed that rifle and tested it on a ship that he commanded called the Plymouth. Um, there were a whole series of carbines made for the Civil War, principal ones being the Spencer, which we already talked about in rifle form, and the Sharps and the uh, Smith, and the Maynard, and many, many others. But those are the principal ones. This one is the Maynard. And even though it wasn't a repeating rifle, it fired bullets. So if you cocked it down, um, it took a place for a bullet, rather than having to load it down, down the barrel. So that's why carbines were so important. And they all have rings to be able to be hung from a saddle. It calls a saddle ring. This is the Sharps carbine. And the Sharps carbine is the, the most romantic of all the Civil War, even though the Spencer is a, is a repeating gun, the Sharps is really the gun that everybody seems to like the most. It has that really romantic kind of a look to it. And it loads like that. And this one has on it a carbine clip, which would mean you'd have a lanyard across your chest and this would be through the lanyard, so that if you were riding on horseback and you needed to draw your sword or you needed to rein in the, if you let go, the carbine wouldn't fall to the ground because you were on horseback. And uh, the Sharps later became what they called the uh, buffalo rifle. So this is what went north, went west with, so, with uh, the horse soldiers and became the buffalo rifle. This is, a, this is a Springfield trap door, so it loads one 4570 shell down here, big monster shell, but only one shell. That's what they were shooting. This, and the Indians were shooting this gun, the 1873 Winchester. So there was no chance. This thing fired eight shots. And, and, and was easy to reload, and that thing fired one shot. <laughs>